Amen. Let me welcome my music minister, our worship minister at Central Church, Mr. Ben Prater. Y'all give it up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning. Oh my, that was, that was worse than the group before. You guys still asleep? Shouldn't be after that. You guys were rocking it just a minute ago. Let's try it again. Good morning. All right, that's a little bit better. That's what I'm talking about. My name is Ben Prater or Mr. Ben. Um, I am the worship minister at Central Church. And uh, I was telling the, the group earlier, I also, part of my job is within the communications and media role at our church. And so it's like all things techie, right? And then in the end, I couldn't even turn the remote on correctly. All right, so that was totally my bad. Um, so yeah, what I do is basically, I mean, in a nutshell, I just kind of get up, get to play some instruments, sing some songs, and worship. And, uh, and I love it. I've been doing it for a long time, and it's uh, pretty much all I've known. And I'm very thankful to have the opportunities to do that and use uh, what I feel like the, the gifts and skill sets that the Lord has given me. Um, and this, in particular, is not something that I normally do. I don't normally stand in front of people and talk. Um, usually, I'm like, I have no idea what's going to come out of my mouth, so it could be a dangerous thing, right? But I am blessed because my wife is Miss Lexi, as I hope that most of you know, and she is the one who led chapel last week. And so I am just going to be straight up with you guys. I totally, I totally bummed some slides off of her for this one, all right? I was like, hey, you already did all that work. Let's use them again, all right? Uh, and I have two kids. Nolan is in kindergarten here, and Annie is in third grade. Um, so we are blessed and thankful to be here. I'm glad to be here with you guys this morning. And um, I want to recap a little bit about what Miss Lexi uh, talked about last week. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Romans 8, 37. You remember she showed this video, right? You guys remember the video? It was the Rocket Boys. Homer and the Rocket Boys. And they lived in a coal mining town where if you lived there, the expectation was that you would grow up and you would be a coal miner. There was nothing wrong with that per se, but it wasn't what this group of kids really wanted to do. They wanted to be able to go to college. And they found that they weren't the most athletic type of people. Maybe they just weren't that interested in athletics. And in order to get out of that town, you had to pretty much have an athletic scholarship to go to college. And then they found out about a science fair that you could win and potentially get scholarships and be able to not be in that town and, and to be something different. And so what they do? They banded together. Even though everyone was telling them, no, this is not a good idea. This is not what you were created for. This is not what you were made for. You were supposed to be a coal miner. They said, I just don't feel that. And they made a rocket. And that rocket soared through the air. Do you guys remember? What mountain was it that uh, it was higher than? Just shout it out. Mount Everest. Mount Everest. That's right. Mount Everest is pretty tall. I don't know. If you also noticed in that video, but Homer, uh, Homer got himself a girlfriend. Did you guys notice that? I'm just saying. Yeah, he skipped that part. Homer got himself a girlfriend from that deal. Romans 8, 38. That's my verse this morning. I'm including 39 in here because I think that they need to go together and it's important to read it all. I, for I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Death nor life. Myself, our church family, we experienced that this week with the loss of a friend, with the loss of a coworker. But we know, and especially because of verses like this, that death does not separate us from the love of God. And amidst all the sorrow and the confusion and all the things that you have to deal with and unpack, 
that comes with an untimely death, there's still this hope and this peace because we know that our friend, our coworker, is with Jesus today. Nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present or things to come, meaning things that are happening right now or things that are going to happen in the future. Nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will separate us from the love of God. Height nor depth. I want to focus on this for just a minute. Why? Because height and depth, it's a great visual representation, right? We know how tall things are, for instance. We see trees outside and the different sizes, and you're like, oh, man, that's a big tree. And then you, you go a little further, and you're like, whoa, that's an even bigger tree. That's a little bitty one right over there. Mountains, right? We talked about Mount Everest. Mount Everest is, is tall. If you've ever seen pictures or videos of people trying to climb, they have to wear oxygen masks, and they have to train, and it's cold, and the weather's unpredictable because of the height. Let's do a little example here. I'm going to go ahead and call up Annie. That's an easy one on this part. Here, I'll come over to you. Stand next to me. Who's taller? Are you sure? You know that, right? Because you can see. Probably not for much longer. Thank you. I come from a family of uh, tall people. I don't know if you noticed. All right. My dad, he was like 6'2". His brother was 6'7", played professional football. My brother and I are 5'10 on a good day, depending on what shoes we're wearing, all right? Height was not good for my brother and I. But visually, you can see the difference. Another area that we don't, we don't really pay as much of attention to because we really just see surface when we look at it is the ocean. Y'all, the ocean is deep, and it's huge. All right, let's take a look at this. I thought this was cool. How deep is the ocean? I totally narrated this for the first one, like we were, you know, in the submarine together. I'm going to do the same thing for y'all as well. Sorry. All right, we're going down. 40 meters, maximum depth for recreational scuba divers. So uh, if you ever go scuba diving, 40 meters, don't go beyond that. Could be dangerous. 301 meters. The height of the Eiffel Tower. That's crazy. If you put the Eiffel Tower in the ocean, it's still deeper. The deepest blue whales can dive, 500. We're going to keep going down. We're going to keep going down. We're going to keep going down. A thousand meters. This is where sunlight is no longer able to reach and you're able to see in the ocean. So now we're traveling in the dark. That's why our sweet little submarine has some lights. That's the lowest point of the Grand Canyon right there. It's still deeper. It's still deeper. The average depth of the ocean, 4,200 meters. We're still going down. This is crazy. It's about to be on 6,000. Oh my goodness, it's still going. I'm getting dizzy. Almost 9,000 meters. The height of Mount Everest. If you put Mount Everest in the ocean, turn it upside down, the ocean is still deeper. We're going to keep going. The number's getting a lot bigger. All right, listen. This is a depth that somebody reached in a special submarine a long time ago. But guess what? The ocean is still deeper. No human in particular without special equipment and you know can even get close to the deepest deepest part of the ocean. And it's dangerous. Right? There's a lot of pressure, and it's dark, and it's just not where we're made to be. But we don't even see that, because what do we see? We see the surface. We see what's on top. But in God's creation, is just, man, it's remarkable. The earth is a remarkable place, all right? We are reminded of just how great God's love is for us in this verse. It's so great that not even the deepest part of the ocean that we can't get to can separate us from him when we have them in our hearts. 
This is a point I'm going to drive in right here, all right? If you take nothing else away from this morning, I want you to take this away. When Christ is truly in your heart, He is there forever. We try to be intentional when we have people that say, hey, I've accepted Jesus into my heart. I, I want to be baptized or I want to know more about it. We, we try to take our time with that because it's so important for you to make that decision individually and for you to know that Christ is there to be in your heart, but it's you that invites him in. I can't do that for you. The people around can't do that for you. Our teachers are here to help us along the way, but the reality is it's your decision to make. And we want you to make the right decision because when he is in your heart, he is in there forever. Nothing can separate him from, from you. All right, I told you I was still in slides. Last week, Miss Lexi, she showed you this slide. You got molecules right here, all right? Hydrogen and oxygen, they make what? Oh, we got to step up those science classes. Hydrogen and oxygen, they make water. All right, she showed you this last time, all right? In case you can't see, water. What you have here is that us and you have Christ, and we're separated. When we ask him into our heart, we become one, and you can't take that away. The oil over here on the side, trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, attacks to the devil, the things of the world, life happens, and they're going to try to mess you up, right? You saw this last time. I don't know if you can see it as well. I'm just going to dump it all in there at once. That oil goes in, and what happens? Shout it out. Floats to the top. The last group said separates. And I was like, yes, actually, you're right. Why would, why would it separate? You just read that nothing can separate us from the love of God. But if we look at this, and we look at this picture right here, when we have Christ in our hearts, we're that water right here. And this is everything else. This is the world this is Satan trying to get in there and say, you're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You don't have enough hair on your head. But I have the love of Christ in my heart and you cannot take that away from me ever. When Christ is truly in your heart, he is in there forever and ever and ever. Death nor life, angels nor rulers, things present or things to come, powers, height nor depth, nor anything can separate us from the love of God. I'm going to point out the obvious here, all right? I have tattoos, all right? Now some of you are like, oh, I thought that was, that's what I, was, I told you he had a tattoo in here, you know what I'm saying? It's true. Listen, I was always taught and forever, this was the case. Tattoos are permanent. They're there for the rest of your life. Are you sure that's what you want? Are you sure? That's going to be there forever. And let me tell you something. If you're listening, I am not advocating for tattoos, all right? Do not get a tattoo. A, they hurt. But here's what's crazy. Several years later, what I thought was once permanent and forever is no longer. Because of new technology and things that they've come out with, they can actually remove tattoos, right? It's not the same as it was before, but they can remove them. Because what we see as permanent sometimes, or what we've known as permanent and that will be there forever, is not always the case. But what we're reminded of in verses like these is that when you have Christ in your heart, He is there forever. No new technology. Nothing that you hear about or that you read about will ever take that away from you. All right? Last thing. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything, anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's pray together. God, thank you for these reminders. 
Thank you that your love is greater than all things. Thank you that we can find comfort in knowing that no matter what life throws at you, your love remains for us. Help keep our minds, our words, our actions, and our hearts pointed towards you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said? Amen. See you guys.